In this video, I'm going to show you how to rip a DVD using Handbrake and Windows 8. Now, you need to download some software. So, if you go to the Handbrake website, so it's handbrake.fr, and all links will be in the description, and download Handbrake for your version of Windows. Handbrake can determine whether you're using Windows or Mac, so it's offering to download the latest version. 0.10.1 but I'm not sure whether that's 32-bit or 64-bit so I reject that one and go to the downloads page and download the 64-bit version of Handbrake and if you're on a Mac there's the link for the Mac version. You also need a program called VLC Media Player and again, there are 32-bit versions and 64-bit versions for Windows. And that is from videolan.org. And for me, it's the 64-bit version again. But you can find which version you need from their website. And then you also need a extra file to decrypt commercial DVDs. Handbrake can convert video files to other formats. It can rip DVDs as long as those DVDs are not copy protected. In order to rip a DVD that you own, so, if, so I'm going to show you how to, to rip the movie Bowfinger that I've purchased, but I want to play that movie on my iPad, not on a DVD player. So I own it. I'm not advocating piracy in any way. So as long as you own it, you have to find a way of decrypting it, removing the copy protection, and that's what VLC Media Player does. But you also need an additional file, and that file is called libdvdcss. If you're using Windows, this is the link to the Windows version of libdvdcss, and it has the Win64, so here's the 64-bit version. There's the 32-bit version, so you've got to get the right one for your system. And then when you've downloaded all the files, we'll just go into the Downloads folder. These are the files that you need. Your copy of Handbrake, the latest version, 0.10.1, 64-bit for me. You need the VLC Media Player, 64-bit, and you need your LibDVD CSS file. And this is, these are the three here for Windows. This is, so then go and install Handbrake and VLC Player. So I'm going to install Handbrake first, so just double click it and work your way through all the menus, um, leaving it in the default location, Program Files, Program Files, Handbrake, and install it. Install the VLC player, so double click. And again, I'm just accepting all the defaults and changing nothing here except what it gives me, leaving it in Program Files and Install. So that's Install, click Finish. And then if I go into All Programs, I've got Handbrake, and then I have Video Land, the VLC Media Player. And the, the VLC Media Player will play any sort of media file, any sort of video file. So if you don't want to use the Windows Media Player, it's a perfectly good media player. Now this file here needs to be put into the Handbrake folder. Because if you don't do that, Handbrake will just not decrypt or rip a protective DVD. So you go into your C drive. and it's Program Files and Handbrake and this file libdvd css-2 just drag it across from your Downloads folder into your Handbrake folder and continue if you need administrator permission and if I go into the Handbrake folder and through all the files that's the file libdvdcss. You need that file. In previous versions of Handbrake, you needed to rename that file. You don't any longer. So if you haven't been able to get this 
ripping process to work, that could be the reason. So if we go and open Handbrake, and Handbrake puts a shortcut onto your desktop, as, as does VLC Media Player. Double click to open Handbrake. And now we're ready to start ripping. So let's look at the ripping process. Handbrake can be a little bit overwhelming when you first look at it. The first thing you've got to do is set the output destinations. In the Tools menu, select Options and then Output Files and then Browse to set where you want your videos to be saved to. So I'm going to put mine into the Downloads folder and select that folder. And my folders will look a bit different perhaps because I'm using a Mac and I've got Windows installed on Mac. So my folders will include Mac folders as well, which is why you don't see a C drive here. My ripped videos will be saved directly to the Downloads folder. Format I generally leave, it, leave as is, but it'll just provide a title and the source when you're ready to, to rip. And there is nothing else you need to do in the references, so just close. And up the top here is the source. So we've got to search for where your source is. Now it might be a single file that you want to convert to another format. So it might be a .avi and you want to convert it to an MP4. Or generally it's a DVD. And if it's a DVD, you've got to navigate to the actual folder where the video files are, the VTS folder. So when I click Source, here I can open a single file. I can navigate to uh, the C drive or whatever drive the file is on to open it. Uh, or I need to go to a folder and find my DVD drive. My DVD drive, because I'm using a Mac, is a W drive. I'm going to rip the movie called Bowfinger. So I'm going to select that drive. And then look for the video TS folder. Just select it once, click to select it, and select that folder. And that's going to scan that source and load in all the titles from that DVD. And remember that DVDs have the movie file and then they have a lot of extra files on top of that. Deleted scenes, outtakes, uh, commentaries, director's cut. There could be all sorts of extras on that DVD. And in this case, I just want to rip the actual movie, not everything else. But you're going to have to know which one of those five titles is the actual movie title. So we need to wait while it scans your DVD. So once it's scanned, it gives you a number of titles. So if I click down here, there are five titles on this DVD. The longest one is generally your movie. So in this case, 1 hour 32 minutes, 54 seconds, is the movie file. But there are a number of other files on this DVD. One is 23 minutes, one is 5, one is 2, one is 1. And how do you know which one is which? So you can do a preview. So if I select uh, title number 2 and then do a, a preview, I can get a 10 second preview to see what that file is and play that. And that's just going to get the 10 seconds of that file just to see what it is. Turn the sound off. So this is some sort of commentary file, number two. Now there is a, a easier way to find what all the different files are. Instead of doing the preview, if you open the VLC Media Player, go to Media, open the folder, and find the folder. So the same process you did to find the source for Handbrake. So finding the video folder, just going to load that DVD, select the folder. And that's going to start the movie playing. Then if I stop that and go to playback, title, then I can see all of the different titles. So this one's going to go to the actual menu of the DVD. But if I want to see what is title 2, I can just select title 2 and it will just load title 2. Then play it. And so I know this is, this is a feature, Spotlight on Location. So I might want to, to rip that one. We'll play back. And title number three. 
five minutes, so it's got to be something interesting perhaps, and then play that. And then I can scrub through it to see what it is. So it might be a deleted scene. A bit hard to know. But it's not something I might want to look at. Once you've selected your title, then where are you going to save your ripped file? And because you've changed the preferences up in Tools Options, it's going into, in my case, the Downloads folder. And all I need to do is change the title because I don't want it to be called Video TS1. So I just want to call it Bowfinger. Make sure Title 1 is selected. Ensure its video codec is H.264 and the container is MP4. Web Optimize will mean it's a slightly smaller file size without affecting the quality. Then you need to select a preset. The ones down at the bottom here are for using with computers. The regular ones, once you've ripped the file, uh, will be able to be played on computers and on any other device. But if you particularly want to play something on one of these mobile devices, then you could pick that as a preset. And when you pick a preset, it changes some of the settings to optimize it for that particular device. So if I wanted to watch this movie on an Apple TV 3, then I would choose that preset. And it changes the, the information down here in the optimized video. It just changes the settings for the device you're using. So if I selected Universal, and if you, you watch the optimized video section, it changes some of the settings there. So I've found the Universal, if you rip something with the universal preset, then it will play on all of those tablets and mobile devices and a computer. High profile changes it again. Now all the other tabs here, you don't need to touch those or tweak them if you're just wanting a straight rip. Apart from making sure you've got H.264 and MP4, you can leave the rest and leave it as is. If you want to make the audio a little bit better quality you can change it to 320 but that means your rip will take longer and it will be a bigger file size just leave it as the def at the defaults pick a preset so i'm going to pick high profile if your presets aren't visible then they'll be up here in the presets and you can pick them from there also if you haven't got any presets, then Handbrake will prompt you to download some, but they will come with the installation of Handbrake. And, and then all I have to do is do Start. I can do Preview if I want to see how that's going to look. Do a Preview and pick up to 240 seconds of that title. Or I could do multiple titles and add them to a queue. So at the moment, all I have to do is click Start, and that's going to start ripping that, that title. If I want to also rip the second title, which was that feature, Spotlight on Location, then I could do that in the same ripping process by adding them to a queue. So I'm going to add this one. This is the actual movie, the 1 hour 32. I'm going to add it to the queue. And see at the bottom is one end code pending, and I can show the queue and look at uh, everything that is going to be ripped, including all of the settings that I've selected. I also want to rip the second title, so I'm going to select the second title. I'm going to call it Spotlight on Location, because I've already looked in uh, the VLC player to see what all the titles were called. I'm going to use the same settings, MP4. H.264, the same preset, so I don't have to touch anything else. Add it to the queue. Now I've got two encodes. Show the queue. And it's going to encode the movie Bowfinger. And as soon as it's finished that one, it's going to then encode the next one and put them both into your default location. Let's just move that, which was the downloads folder. Now if you didn't want all of the chapters of a particular title you've got chapters one through two so in this case it's a small 
title. There are 23 minutes and it has two chapters. Uh, the title one has 19 chapters. And if I only wanted a little bit of it just to see what the movie was like, I could just select only, only rip chapters one to three, which is 17 minutes worth of that movie. Now, once I've added them to the queue, then all I've got to do is click start. And it's preparing to encode, which show the queue, see what's happening there. It's preparing to encode, and it will tell you how long it's got to go before it's finished. And because it's doing it in real time, and it's going to take the length of the movie, it's going to take well over an hour to encode this, depending on your settings. So once you've started encoding it, you just go away, do something else. You can also, in this queue, when it's done, you've got options about what you want uh, to happen. You can log off handbrake or shut down your system or you can do nothing. I just generally leave it. If you've got a lot of encoding to do, you can do it overnight. Just get them all in the queue and start ripping and then leave it. Go away overnight. They'll be finished when you come back. At the bottom here, it's encoding. So it's telling me how long, in a minute, how long it will uh, take. So it's an, an hour. Time's going up a little bit, though. So I will come back once that's finished encoding and show you the finished product. So the rip has finished, and here are the final files. So the Bowfinger movie is ripped at a file size of 1.4 gigabytes. Now, the original movie on the DVD was over 4 gigabytes. So this is about a normal size for a, a movie file. And Spotlight on Location has been ripped also, and that's 302 megabytes. Now, if I want to watch that movie, in this case, I'll look at QuickTime Player. Let's turn the sound off. And the quality is pretty good. You can go to full screen. Scrub through it. Now, if you thought that size was too big, you could go back into Handbrake, load that file, and then try and make it smaller. Reduce the, the file size, but retain the quality. Load the source, and this time we're going to load a file. That's in the Downloads folder, and Bowfinger. Open it. And I'm still going to use the universal preset. I'm going to web optimize it. And that will reduce the file size without affecting the quality. Retain the container as MP4, video code as H264, and then rename it so I know it's the resized version. And start. And then code it again. This time it's going to reduce the size. So if you're wanting to put this onto a to network attached storage or load it onto your, your tablet, then one gigabyte is a pretty big file. So you want to try and get it smaller if you can without affecting the quality.